Shalom, Khabari, my name is Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. A very tense situation going on in the Middle East. All kinds of things are breaking. In fact, our breaking story that I wanted to share with you is Damascus is under attack. They're under an assault uh, going on right now inside of Israel there. Let me just share with you some of the images that are coming out on Damascus. A uh, very heavy assault that is, that is happening there. This is uh, a brief video there on your screen and behind you there of an attack that, that, that's come under fire with the rebel forces uh, as well. We have uh, these images here coming out of Damascus. I'll turn the volume down just a little bit there for you there, but you can see the huge plumes of smoke there coming out of Damascus there. Uh, according to the uh, Facebook page of, uh, of uh, the, um, let me find that one real quick here. I've got so many different pages opened up here. Here we go, right here. According to the Facebook page of the Syrian military, it says the Syrian uh, army has repels a massive terrorist attack near Damascus. So the Syrian military is calling it a massive terrorist attack near Damascus. Uh, says Syrian ground forces and warplanes have repelled a multi-pronged attack by the terrorist groups of Jabhat Hat Fateh al-Sham in Damascus countryside. Uh, again, breaking news, and that is very serious right there. As we remember the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 17 that says Damascus will become a ruinous heap. Now, what's interesting in that is not so much these rebel groups that are doing these attacks there on Damascus that could cause it to become a, a ruinous heap, but the actions of Israel and the United States inside of Syria right now, they may be the very ones to fulfill that prophecy. When I say that, RT News, Israeli minister threatens to destroy Syrian air defenses uh, if the next time uh, Israel is inside of Syria targeting Hezbollah forces and, and arms that are being supplied to Hezbollah are going through the Syrian country. Uh, if they're targeted once again by the Syrian uh, military, they have promised to take out uh, the Syrian air defenses. Now, guys, you have to understand that's very serious for Russia as well because uh, the Russians have stated there uh, that um, that uh, and, and they demanded uh, the envoy of Israel in a meeting recently to make clarifications on the Syrian strike because uh, the, from what the Russians are stating there that the airstrikes were very close to Russian troops that are on the ground there. That would not be a good thing, of course, if Israel accidentally uh, were to hit Russian forces on the ground. That is a very, very tense situation. The article here states here, I'll just give you a little bit of insight. Russia summoned the Israeli ambassador to Moscow, Gary Koren, to provide clarification Friday Less than 24 hours after Israel struck targets inside of Syria, as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a statement explaining the reasonings behind the operation. If you remember, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu recently was there in Moscow. Uh, they both talked about Iran, and Prime Minister Netanyahu was very bold right there in the opening address of his concerns of Iran. And of course, President Putin didn't back down either saying that it was Persia from many, many years ago, back, uh, you're talking about 5th century uh, BC that he was talking about. So uh, the Russian government willing to stand up for Iran, Israel very concerned about Iran because uh, quite frankly, Iran has threatened to wipe Israel off the map. Uh, and yet it seems like Russia is trying to calm the situation there between the uh, Iranians and that of the Israelis. But then we're also dealing with Hezbollah and Hezbollah has definitely sent rockets over the border inside of Israel before they have really built up a tremendous arsenal. And what Israel was targeting this time was even more concerning because according to this report here on Jerusalem Online, says Israel attacked in order to prevent North Korean weapons convoy to Hezbollah. Now that's very concerning because as you know, Kim Jong-un has developed intercontinental ballistic missiles nuclear capabilities and Hezbollah, they want their hands on that to tilt the balance of power in the region in their favor. Now, Israel is already a nuclear state, although they do not admit to this. Everyone knows that Israel does have nuclear weapons and no doubt a need to have them in this region of the world where so many of their neighbors would love to wipe the Jewish people off the face of the earth. 
All right, so this is something that's going on. Very tense situation, though, for Russia and Israel right now. And at the same time, Prime Minister Netanyahu not backing down. And why? Because he knows that President uh, Donald Trump has his back. And I can certainly agree with that. Zechariah chapter 12, as I stated recently, uh, very fascinating word. The governors of Judah actually, as in modern Hebrew, Afuli is the champions of Israel. And we know that President Trump has moved into uh, Syria there. He has actually moved into in Syria and, uh, and building up there. U.S. tries, uh, wait, let me back up one second here. Here we go, right here. Uh, and they're moving more and more troops inside of Syria there. As we can see, some of the latest uh, armored vehicles that the United States is using, they're moving them in from Iraq inside of Syria. And let's just real quick jump over to Lorenzo's uh, Twitter page. He's always got some interesting things coming out, uh, going on there. Uh, he says, uh, which I didn't catch this either, Japan starts to patrol the South China Sea with uh, Akizuki-class destroyers. Uh, but just let me drop down to where we're looking at here. Uh, Iraq American convoy building up the highway from Baghdad towards uh, North Iraq. Won't say to where now due to op uh, OPSEX. Uh, so these are some of those uh, military equipments that are coming into uh, Syria for Iraq. And uh, uh, we just we have a lot of stuff that is going on there. And I know that uh, Lorenzo here was one that he had point published here. Now, this was in Alabama, in the United States. All these new uh, armored uh, uh, vehicles that they have going in is pretty much replacing the old uh, style uh, that the uh, Humvees. And when I saw these coming in, Lorenzo put it out there as going to the eastern part of the United States. Well, I kind of felt like they may be taking these to Syria. Uh, so the United States is definitely building up a force there. We see that Damascus is definitely... Uh, heated up right now with with these uh, the attacks assaults that's going on there. Israel has been knocking out any type of weapons that Hezbollah is trying to bring over into their country. There, speaking of Hezbollah, we have here on J Post right here. Israel's uh, interfering in Syria to help the Islamic State. That's what Nasrallah is claiming right here in one of his latest uh, threats here. And so, uh, you know, the United States got to remember as well that Hezbollah is a threat to the U.S. as well as to Israel. Uh, and so that's just making the situation more tense there going on inside the Middle East there. Another thing, though, that's interesting, though, Russia took a very good, uh, very close stand for the United States in this latest uh, issue going on inside of Syria, where uh, some of those are claiming that the United States uh, uh, intentionally targeted a mosque and killed the people in the mosque there. Uh, but Maria Zakharova, the foreign uh, minister statesman for uh, uh, Russia, she came to the aid of the United States and she stated here, the airstrike targeting a building located across the street from the mosque where Al-Qaeda members usually hold their meetings. Of course, there should be a probe into what happened in al in order to figure out what target, target was hit and, and who are the victims the so-called witnesses are talking about. However, we don't have any doubts that the U.S. airstrikes targeted terrorists. Uh, so even though there is a very tense situation going on in Syria and is putting Israel and Russia and the U.S. and Russia and their relationships together, it's really putting them at a very tense situation because of Iran and Hezbollah. I would imagine that if Iran didn't have the close relationships with uh, the Syrian king Bashar al-Assad or with that of Hezbollah, then they could probably get along a little bit better there in the region there. But uh, it is a very tough and very tense situation going on. One other mention here, uh, actually a couple more things I want to mention real quick in closing here. Tactical Investor is reporting Russia is winning the electronic war impossible Saudi coup. Uh, says Russia, uh, there speaks in this article here that how that the Russian uh, military is using some of the most sophisticated uh, jamming equipment here that is talk t turning the drones that the U.S. is using over near places such as Crimea, Ukraine, and even in uh, Syria is giving, totally, giving them a total blackout, not able to see anything. Uh, and it really goes into some very interesting details how Russia has a little bit of advanced uh, equipment using there on the Americans there. Another very serious news that is breaking over in the UK, sex selective abortion should be allowed, says British Medical Association ethics expert. You have got to be kidding me. 
You know, abortion is bad enough, and I feel for the women that have ever gone through it. I know many women really suffer emotionally uh, devastating things in their lives when it comes to abortions afterwards, because it's normally after the fact that there's so much regret and remorse. My heart is there for women that have suffered that, as well as for the fathers of those children, and uh, because both do suffer a lot from these things, and people may not realize that. Uh, but this lady here says, a, has a sign that says, I am a woman, not a womb. I agree with that. Women are women. They're not wombs. But we have to think about what we're doing in our actions that causes us to end up having children. Uh, if, if, you know, it's not a matter of taking the life of a child. If you're willing to take and, and get into the actions there, you got to keep in mind there is a possibility that you could end up having a child come into that womb. Uh, and I think that that's something that should be considered as well. It just, I can't help but when I see articles like this here, um, I cannot help but think of Herod in the Bible when he wanted to kill all the children two years old and down just to be able to kill the Messiah that was coming. And it's no different today. I believe that when abortions were legalized in the United States back in the uh, early 60s there, that what Satan was doing was he was targeting, looking for the anointed ones that were to come in the earth in this last day. Definitely, the two witnesses, I believe, will be anointed of the Spirit. So therefore, they were born in this life. Not that it's Moses and Elijah being born in this life, per se. That's not what I'm speaking about there. But what I'm talking about is that the bodies that they will anoint have already been born. And Herod was trying to get rid of them. And what better way for Herod to do it in modern days than to legalize abortion. Remember, Herod was the governor. And when the government takes and legalizes abortion, it was a target for the anointed. Oh my gosh. Paris, in concluding here, very serious situation there. Horror as a father and son have had their throat slits in the streets of Paris. A very sad thing that has taken place uh, there uh, Friday. And uh, I did not catch this earlier there, but um, just another uh, a terrorist activity that took place in the country there. And we can expect, no doubt, more of this type of violence is probably going to be on the increase, especially in that part of Western Europe, where there are so many refugees uh, and making the situation even worse. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, remember, don't forget, we will be headed to Israel this week and covering many things there. We do need your help and appreciate your help. So many things God has been revealing to me here lately, and I'm really wanting to share some things with you that will just rock your mind completely. Uh, but anyway, we thank you. If you'd like, don't forget, look, look right here on the channel now, right on our videos here on the channel itself. You have, we have a little place there that you can donate when you're looking on the channel itself, not in the video itself. Uh, I will always place Israeli News Live link on there, but our channel itself, if you look right there in the picture, right above where you can click to subscribe to this channel, there's a little place you can donate there so we were able to make it a little bit easier for you guys. God bless you and thank you for watching Israeli News Live.